In this video, I'm going to show you how to do subnetting by hand. This way we can eliminate all of the math and all of the pen and paper and be able to get the answers we need really quickly. It's really just a shortcut. In the last couple of videos, I showed you how everything worked so that you understand the theory behind it all. But now, we're going to get to the quick way of doing it. So when I subnet by hand to do this demonstration, I'm going to wear my subnetting gloves. Now, my subnetting gloves are special because I have little numbers written on the back side of them that I'm going to show you here. So you may see here on my subnetting gloves that I have numbers written on them. Now, in the real world, you're not going to have your gloves on, but you can memorize these numbers fairly easily. They're just multiples of two. Now, if I'm going to start on my right, which on your screen is going to look like the left, you'll see I have 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128, and 256 written down. This tells me how many networks there are. This goes back to our 2 to the nth power, which was our formula that we used when we did this by hand. So if I asked you if you had a slash 26 network, how many subnets can be put into a slash 26 if you were given a slash 24 to start with? Well, if I have a slash 24 to start with, I'm going to start counting up from there. So my first finger is going to be slash 25 and then slash 26. And since I asked for a slash 26, you can see the number is 4. Now, we can do it the other way and we can go from my left to right. In your case, it's going to be your right side of the screen to your left. And this is going to tell me how many hosts or IPs I can have inside of a network. So, if I start from the other side and I start with a slash 24, I have 256. Slash 25, I have 128. I have a slash 26, that's 64. Slash 27, that's 32. Slash 28, that's 16. Slash 29, that's 8. Slash 30, that's 4. Slash 31, that's 2. So you can see how this works going from right to left or left to right to be able to figure out how many networks or how many IPs are available. Now we're going to do a couple of examples using this method. The first one I'm going to use is this one. It's 192.168.0.85. Now the numbers really don't matter. It's really what's important is that slash 29 at the end. So if you want to figure out how many subnets there were in a slash 29, how would you do that? Well, we're going to count up from right to left, upwards in the multiples of two. So if I start counting on my fingers, I go 25, 26, 27, 28, 29. And what's on my 29? It's 32. There are 32 subnets if I'm using a slash 29 network within a normal class C network. Now, if I'm going to look at this from an IP perspective, I'm going to do it the other way. How many IPs are there in a slash 29? Well, we're going to start out with slash 24, 256, slash 25, 26, 27, 28, 29. And there you'll see I have eight IPs. Now, if you remember from our lessons, you always have a broadcast and you always have a network name. So really, I have six usable IPs for hosts. I have the first IP, which is my network, and my last IP, which is my broadcast, giving us a total of eight. Again, that's that slash 29, that's eight. The next problem we have is 192.168.1.25, slash 28. So if I'm doing slash 28, how many subnets and how many IPs? Well, let's pull out our gloves again and we'll start. We have slash 25, slash 26, slash 27, slash 28, and the slash 28 has 16 on it. Now, if I go the other way for how many IPs, I'm going to go slash 24, slash 25, slash 26, slash 27, slash 28. It's also 16. So we have 16 subnets and 16 available IPs. You can see how this works. It makes it really easy. So I think you're getting the idea here, but let's try two more. This next one has a slash 30. So how many subnets and how many IPs? Well, let's pull out our gloves again. And so we have slash 25, slash 26, slash 27, 28, 29, and 30. And on 30, you see 64 because we counted up 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64. And so by doing that, we now know we have 64 subnets. That's what a slash 30 is. I could take 256 IPs in a class C and I could break it up 64 different times. Now, how many IPs is that going to be? Well, it's 256 divided by 64, but if we use our gloves, we can go the other way. 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, and it's 4. 4 IPs. Because if we have 4 IPs and 64 subnets, that's going to give us 256 total. Let's try another one. This one's going to be a slash 31. Now, a slash 31, that's not even on the table you told me to memorize, Jason. 
That's right, that's because it's a non-standard one, but Cisco does support it. It's usually used for point-to-point -point connections. So if I'm gonna connect one router to another router, and I don't need to have a network and a broadcast in that case with Cisco devices, I can use a slash 31. So I'll only use two IPs instead of the four that we had in the last slash 30 example, which is normally used for point-to-point. But again, if we pull out our hands, we can start going and figure out how many subnets and how many IPs. So let's do that. Slash 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31. So that tells me it's on my seventh finger. So if I didn't have my gloves on, I would just do powers of two. Two, four, eight, 16, 32, 64, 128. And so that seventh finger is 128. There's 128 subnets. Now, I'm sure you can do the math here. If there's 256 total IPs in a class C, and we just took up 128 subnets, that means there's gonna be two IPs per subnet. So let's do it with our hands anyway, just because that's what we're doing in this video. And so here we go. We're gonna go 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, and 31. And on 31, we have a two, right? We can do that if we went and counted up or counted down. 256, 128, 64, 32, 16, eight, four, and two, and that gets us to that same number of two. So it's all about memorizing these multiples of two as we go through this. Again, a slash 31 is something that Cisco supported. Some of the other routers are starting to support it, but it is something that is mainly a Cisco thing. Let's go ahead and do one last one here, and this one is gonna be a slash 32. So when we're doing a slash 32, you may go, do I even need to use my hands? Well, you really don't, because a slash 32 just denotes a single host. If I have your IP address and put slash 32, it means it's only that IP. And so that really is just one IP and there can be 256 subnets. But if you wanted to use your hands, you could do that, right? Because we have 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, and 32. And you see on 32, it's 256. I think you get the idea here. So this is how you can do this in a very quick and easy manner. Now, before we finish this video, I do wanna put this to practice to some of the things you're gonna see on the Network Plus exam, because you're likely not gonna get a question that just says how many subnets or how many IPs. It's gonna be a little bit more complicated than that. So let's go to the next question, and you're gonna be able to see what we have. So in this case, I have 171.129.67.160 slash 25. And the question I have for you is, what's the network IP, what's the first host, what's the last host, and what's the broadcast? So let's pull out our gloves and take a look at this. So if I pull out my gloves and I go for the first one, a slash 25 is two subnets. Now with two subnets, that means if I'm using 256 IPs, remember I told you on the Network Plus exam, we're always gonna assume that we're doing this in terms of a slash 24 or greater because that's usually what you're gonna see on the exam. So in this case, we're gonna start with slash 24 is 256 IPs. Because this is a slash 25, I'm gonna have two subnets. So I take that 256 and I break it in half, right? So if I have two subnets, what's the first subnet gonna be? Well, it's gonna start at dot zero. What's the second subnet gonna be? It's gonna start at 128 because we have 128 IPs. So the first one goes from zero to 127 and the second one is gonna go from 128 to 255, which gives us our network ID. Our network ID is 171.129.67.128. And our broadcast ID is gonna be .255. So what's our first host and our last host? Well, it's gonna be .129, and our last host is gonna be .254, because our first host is always one above what the network was, and our last host is always one below what the broadcast was. That's how this works when you're just doing it with your hands. It makes it very quick and easy. Let's try another one. The next one we have is 56.187.210.21 slash 28. So if I wanna take a slash 28, we wanna ask how many subnets and how many IP addresses, because that's gonna help us write down where our network and broadcasts are, and that helps us figure out our first host and our last host. So if we have a slash 28, we'll pull out our gloves, and we'll go 25, 26, 27, 28. And 28 is my pinky, which is a 16. So there are 16 subnets. Now, if I go the other way, how many IPs are there? Well. 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. There's also 16 IPs. So 16 IPs and 16 subnets. Now, if you take those 16 IPs, you're gonna go zero through 15, that's the first range. 16 through 31, that's the second range. If we look at our IP address we were given, it ended in dot 21. Where does that fall? Well, it falls in that second range from 16 to 31. 
So our network is 56.187.210.16. Our broadcast is 56.187.210.31. And then we take our last host, which is one less than the broadcast, dot 30, and our first host, one more than the network, dot 17. That's how we can do this, all using, just using our hands with no pen and paper, and we can get these answers very quickly as we go through. I hope this subnetting by hand was helpful, and if you didn't get it the first time, go ahead and rewatch the video again, because once it clicks, it makes all of your subnetting problems so easy and so quick to get through, and you'll have no issues on the Network Plus exam.